asking yes no questions with two in Salva and Quechua. Hello, in this presentation we're going to learn about the way to make questions whose answer can only be yes or no in Salva and Quechua. We'll examine the way in which this suffix is used, the intonation associated with this suffix, and some combinations that this suffix is frequently or sometimes infrequently associated with. Let's take a look at that. In general, there are two types of questions. Open questions could have many possible answers, and then you have closed questions. Those closed questions can only, can only be answered with yes or no. Those are closed questions are then a synonym of yes, no questions. Let's take a quick look at open questions before we go into yes, no questions or closed questions. Open questions are carried, you know, they are performed through interrogative pronouns. And you know some of those already, but here is a list that is more comprehensive. Uh, we have ima, what, p, p, who, my p, where, my manta, where from, my kang, or my kang in some uh, varieties. They are the same thing, they mean which, haika or haika, which means how much, how many in Peru, but in Bolivia, uh, the form is machka, machka, which comes from an older form, which is still in use in some parts of Peru, maichica, which is how much also, uh, and then haikapi or haikap or haikaj, they are the same thing, haikaj, haikapi, haikap, they mean, um, they, those forms mean when. Now, you can combine those interrogative words, words most often than not, with some suffixes that help uh, soften the, the question. We, uh, they help you ask the question in a more polite way. Those suffixes are the one that we know as the uh, evidential for first-hand experience. When you vouch for something because you've experienced that, you know that, or you're fairly certain about something, then you use M or me. M when the word ends with a, a vowel, and me if the word ends with a consonant. Well, in Cusco, in the Cusco variety in particular, you can end those questions on the right side, the interrogative pronouns, you can end those interrogative, pro interrogative pronouns with M or me depending on what question you're, you're asking. So ima is going to be pronounced iman. For instance, iman chai, what's that? Iman. And pi, ping, who? Like if somebody knocks, knocks at the door, you can say simply ping. And that means who? Who is that? Pin. My pi, my ping, my ken, my ken mi, haika, haikan, ma, uh, haikah, me. Those are going to be the way. That's those are the ways in which you ask a soften, a softer question, a less imposing question in Cusco Quechua. However, the other varieties are going to use tag more more commonly. Both the Chanca variety and the Bolivian variety they make further use of uh, tag to soften the question. So we are in classes. We are going to prefer the form with tag. So, imatach, pitach, my pitach, my mantatach, my rantach, my rentach, haika, haikatach, machkatach, haikachtach, haikapi, haikapitach, haikapitach. Those are going to be the questions or the interrogative pronouns in their softened uh, soften form. So, remember that if you use iman or iman pim in the Chanka region or in Bolivia, there is a chance that it's, the, your question is going to be perceived as more forceful if you are really requesting, please, to give me an answer to that. I know there is an answer and I need it. So mind that it's better then to use tag in those regions. Talking about closed or yes, no questions, let's uh, focus on its main their main characteristics. So the formation of the question is fairly straightforward. You just have to attach the suffix to to the end of the word you are asking about. And that is very important, and we're going to analyze this, because it means that chu can appear in any word in a sentence. Because whatever you put chu, it means this is the thing that I want to know. Is this true or not? 
then uh, for instance uh, you have the, the examples here Jorge Mexico Mantam okay that's the assertion Jorge Mexico Mantam Jorge is from Mexico Mexico Mantachu Jorge Jorge Mexico Mantam Mexico Mantachu Jorge so is Jorge from Mexico is is it from Mexico that Jorge is? That's what I'm asking more specifically. Teresa Takehmi. Teresa is a singer. Teresa Takehmi. Takechu Teresa? Takechu Teresa? Is a singer Teresa? Is Teresa a singer? But more specifically, is a singer what Teresa is? Because I am putting two on Takech singer. So usually the word with chu takes the initial position when you are asking a question, and you can see that on the examples. You move it to the front, let's put it like that, so that it's focused. Now, importantly, uh, in, important to remember, although Quechua has many variations, most of them, or many, in many cases, uh, from the, from the coming from the influence of Spanish. So traditional Quechua speakers they do not apply this rising intonation pattern that is so common for English or for Spanish when they ask a yes-no question. For instance, in English, do you want to go? Yes or no. It's, it's different. It's, you don't say uh, something like, you can even say, want to go? Do you want to go? But you know, in Spanish, the same thing. ¿Quieres ir? ¿Quieres ir? ¿Quieres ir? If I say, ¿Quieres ir? That means you want to go. ¿Quieres ir? Do you want to go? Well, in Quechua, you don't do that, really. In Quechua, you just say something like, uh, Rita Munanquichu. Rita Munanquichu. There is a slight intonation uh, rising pattern before Chu, but it is never like at the end of the word that you get this clear rising pitch. You don't do that in Quechua, but you're going to hear people doing that because they are influenced uh, by Spanish. However, if you do use the intonation pattern at the end of the uh, at the end of the word or at the end of the uh, the word that is supposed to have two, then you are not going to use two. You're going to say something like munanki, munanki, and that means do you want? But that is used that is perceived as a rhetorical question or a question that you are asking because you don't believe it is true, like munanki. I mean, do you want, really? This is something you usually don't need. Munanki? So I'm surprised. Or Munanki? So what do you want? You told me, but I didn't... You told me yes or no, but I didn't hear you. So I'm asking you to repeat your question. So this is a little bit more advanced, let's say. But if you are going to use the intonation pattern, then you can do that without two. But it is only... It is mainly understood as a rhetorical question. Now let's focus for a little bit on the relation between the suffix chu and the suffix m, the suffix that indicates that you know something from experience. Usually that um, those suffixes are pretty much in some type of complementary distribution. Whenever you use chu, you don't use me or m, or better because I'm going to explain that there are exceptions to that rule that whatever is marked with two in the question must be marked with me or m in the answer. That is more precise. So, pai chu uh, mamaiki. And you can answer to that, ari pai mi mamai. Ari pai mi mamai. Pai chu mamaiki, is she your mother? Is she your mother? Ari pai mi mamai. Yes, she is my mother. As you can see, the word pai takes Chu here, and then the answer to this thing I am asking is is she your mother? Then the answer is going to be Ari Pai Mi Pai Mi Mamai. Yes, she is my mother. Next example just confirm that correlation. Uh, Champagne Pichu Tiyanki. Ari Champagne Pintiani. Do you live in Champagne? Yes, I live in Champagne. Illinois Pia Chacunquichu. Illinois Pia Chacunquichu. Maanam. Illinois Pia Chachinim. In this case, you can see something different. You can see that the question, Illinois Pia Chacunquichu, do you 
study in Illinois, you can reply that, well, you can say that that is not the case, so manam, here you use this term to indicate simply no, as saying no, it's not the case, manam, and that's why we're using also the M. That's fairly common when you are saying that something is not the case, you just state manam, because you know that it is not the case. Manam, and then you have to give the correct answer. Manam, Illinois pi yachachinim. So the question was, do you study in Illinois? Well, no, it is not the case that I study here. It is the case that I teach in that place. No, I teach in Illinois. So another example, and let's see other possible possible answers. Cochapampa uh, mantachukanki. Ochapampa manta chukanki. Maanam, lima mantam kani. Cochapampa mantachu. Are you from Cochabamba in Bolivia? No, I am from Lima. Manam, lima mantam kani. As I mentioned before, there is a possibility still that you can have the suffix m or the suffix me, well, the suffix, the suffix m specifically in this case, attached to the same word that has chu. And then you have something like paichum. Paichung mamaiki. Is she your mother? And that is strongly, it is, it, it is strongly performed. That means that you, the one who is asking the question, is requiring an answer to that question. So it is not polite. It is more forceful. And you should avoid it unless you want, you want to do really, you know, that you need that answer. Yes or no, you know, your life depends on it or something like that. So, it is possible to do, and this relates to what we saw before when we were talking about how in Cusco they put M or me at the end of the interrogative pronoun, and that to them is the polite way of doing the questions, but it is, it is not the polite way of doing questions in Bolivia or in the Chanca region. Let's talk about now about the, about the focus on the, of the question, which means where do we put two? Chu can be, the suffix chu can be located in any part of, in any word of the sentence. So, for instance, in this example, Philadelphia, Philadelphia Manta Kankichu. Philadelphia Manta Kankichu. The, are you from Philadelphia? That is going to be the general question. Okay, are you from Philadelphia? Is it where you are from? Ari, Philadelphia Manta, Philadelphia Manta Kanim. Ari, Philadelphia Manta Kanim. Yes, I am from Philadelphia, if you want to answer that. Of course, I am not from Philadelphia, but that is just imagining that this is the example. So, Philadelphia Mantachu Kanki. Is it from Philadelphia that you are from? Because I am focusing on Philadelphia. I am not sure, maybe it's another city, but I just want to clear that out. So, Philadelphia Mantachu Kanki. Ari, Philadelphia Mantam Kani. And in this case, you can see how, again, M is marked in correlation with the word where chu was placed, was located before. Pittsburgh Pichu Yachakunki. Pittsburgh Pichu Yachakunki. Do you study in Pittsburgh? You can answer positively to that. Ari, Pittsburgh Pin Yachakuni. Ari, Pittsburgh Pin Yachakuni. Yes, I study in Pittsburgh. Or maybe you can say that that is not correct. The assumption of the question is not correct. And then you can say something like Manam Illinois P. Yachakuni. Mana, Manam Illinois P. Yachakuni. No, I study in Illinois. I study in Illinois. Notice again how the M is placed where chu is located. However, it is possible that nothing in the question you heard is correct. You don't study in Pittsburgh because you don't do that in Pittsburgh and what you do is not to study. It's not studying. So in that case, you can negate everything, manam, and then you give the way in which the uh, in which a statement is correct. So pretty much you are correcting this, the, the, you are correcting the question. So, Pittsburgh Pichu Yachakunki, Manam, Illinoipi Yachachinim. And when you do that, you put the M with the verb because you want to give 
the general statement again. So you are starting from scratch pretty much. Which means manam, no. In Illinois, I teach. Illinois piyachachinim. So is it possible to ask negative questions in Quechua? Aren't there, which is a negative question in the title of this slide, aren't there negative yes, no questions? Ari, kangi, yes, there are. Manachu munanki, don't you want? Manachu Chicago manta kanki, aren't you from Chicago? Manachu Chicago manta kanki. I maraiku manadip dish pizzata munakunkichu. Why don't you like deep dish pizza? If aren't you from Chicago, so I am implying that you are from Chicago, so then I'm just asking for confirmation. Aren't you? Manachu Munanki, I think you want. Manachu Munanki, don't you want? So negative questions are used when you assume that the situation is positive. So you just want to get confirmation, maybe I am wrong. So I'm just going to confirm if I am wrong or not. So it is super easy to form those questions. You just have to add chu to mana, and that's all you need. So for instance, look at this example, mana New York Chutian, that is an incorrect question. Mana New York Chutian, that doesn't mean don't you live in New York. That means it is not New York where you live. It's a, it's a negative statement, what you're saying there. We'll study negative statements in another presentation. So, to conclude, ama con caichichu, do not forget, ama con caichichu, that's another form of negation that we'll take a look way later, but ama con caichichu is do not forget. It's a prohibitive negation. Do not forget, a general yes, no question marks with chu the verb. That's the most general. So if you don't know where to put chu, just go ahead and put it on the, on the verb, and that is going to help you. If you want to make a specific yes, no question, then you have to mark with to any other word that you are not sure about. So if there is a piece of information that you want clarified, then you have to put to with that term, with that word. Generally, you mark with m me the word that corresponds to one to the one with to in the question. So there is this correspondence. So what am I asking about? In the question has two, and then the same word is going to be expressed with me or with m in the answer. Well, however, if you uh, if you give totally new information, as in the question that I, it was like, do you study in Pittsburgh? And then no, I don't study. I don't study. I teach, and it's not in Pittsburgh. It's in, in Champaign. Then you have to give the whole information anew. So you're going to mark it with the verb. You're going to mark. Uh, me or M with the main verb in which you are correcting the information. Well, I hope that this clarified some points about the use of to. Remember that there is no rising intonation, at least traditionally in Quechua, when you ask something like, Madam, like you say um, something like Munanquichu, that sounds a little bit forced. Munanquichu, that is a little bit, that is more accurate. And also, if you, you can use M or me, M specifically, with chu, but that is going to produce a more forceful question. So, munankichum means, do you want? Tell me. So, that is not going to be considered polite. Well, keep that in mind. Take a review on the things that we saw in this video, and I'll see you in class. Thank you.